Welcome to In It to Win It. This is Steve Barton, and thank you for tuning in. We are here for Monday Market Moves, what happened last week in the markets and what we expect for next week. Some quick news. The Fed uh, paused. They had their meeting, and they paused, and uh, they're not raising uh, interest rates again. And if we go to the smartest traders in the world, the bond traders, they can show you here that uh 95 percent of them think that for the next meeting in december they're still going to pause five percent think that they will hike 25 basis points and none of them think they're going to cut so that kind of gives us an idea of where they are all right going to the s p oh also trying out a new microphone here let me know if you guys can even tell a difference or uh, uh if it sounds better or worse Okay, S&P 500 uh, shot through the uh, 200 moving average, so it bounced off the 400. Remember, we were saying it could kind of go either way, but our bias was, I think we said 50-50, maybe to the downside. Well, either way, it shot up, didn't see this coming. Um, Through the 200, through the 20, through the 150, and through the 50 moving average. The only thing up above it now is the 100 moving average, and uh, this white line right here, <laughs> as if it's supposed to obey, uh, is at uh, 4,400. So that's kind of the next level of resistance we see there for uh, the S&P 500. All right, moving on to the dollar. We're bringing the DXY, the dollar index up, shot down on Friday and closed at 105. Uh, so it'd been hovering around 106 area for uh, several weeks and uh, finally just dropped out of the sky on uh, Friday. That should affect the commodities because now the dollar has become weaker, so it takes more of those dollars to buy the same commodity, whether that's a barrel of oil or an ounce of gold. Gold has kind of been hanging around 2,000 now for a couple of weeks, uh, and and that white line right there is right at 2,000, and that's a major, major uh, resistance level for gold. It... uh, is basically uh, flat for the week, but that's the one we're going to have to chew through. We we shot up here uh, with the war premium. Uh, now we just got to uh, see if we can uh, uh, see if we can bounce above the uh, uh, two thousand level and sustain. Um, if uh, it comes down, I would say the next real level of resistance is probably nineteen seventy five, then around nineteen fifty, which is around where the two hundred moving average is. So keeping that in mind, it's looking like gold is probably going to correct down. GDX and GDXJ should do about the same thing, although on Friday they did not obey. Uh, They uh, shot up. Um, Both of them are up about 4% for the week, GDX and GDXJ. So if you got your orders in back here, might not be a bad time to take some profits, take a little money off the table. We'll see. Uh, Silver. All right, silver is... um, Pretty much even, it's up about one third of 1% for the week. A lot of volatility to the up and downside. Uh, But we can see here that silver is uh, just touching on the 200 moving average. So a lot of resistance built up right there. Uh, We might even be able to drive a Fibonacci in there, but it's gonna come right around where there's 400 moving averages. So I'd like to see silver hold this level above uh, about $22.50 and just kind of trade in a channel for a little bit there to build up some uh, uh, buying action, and then we can pierce through the 200 uh, on a sustained matter. Leveraging that on SILJ, we're starting to get our arrows in here. You can see our entry points. We'd had one, uh, two of them down here. Thought about taking profits when it hit the uh, hit the 50 moving average, but I think we're gonna we're gonna ride this one out a little bit more and see if we can get a little bit more upside in silver. Maybe we're getting greedy. All righty, and Dan wants to know about Endeavor Silver. Uh, so I backed the chart up here and, you know, actually, let me go to the, uh, to the weekly and then I think it'll illustrate it a little bit better. Okay. So this is going all the way back to 2007 and you can see just how volatile this is here, right? It's a junior silver miner, um, that, uh, is, um, you know, very leveraged to silver. So if we go to silver itself, let's look at this 2016 move right here. We'll use this ruler that we recently learned and we got an up about 50% move there. And then the COVID lows here, we're gonna do another one and we'll have a move up of over 100%, 155%. Okay, so remember those, those two, 50%, 155% on these two time frames. Now we go to this company, Endeavor, and let's take a look at how much it moved in those same time periods. So right there to there, 450%. And then we'll do it again for here to here, over 700%. Okay, so you can have some huge moves in these things. Um, you know, now as far as where I see like a buy point, Dan, 
looking out over the life of this, it's hit down around this white line one, two, three times. If it could hit a fourth time there, I think that would be an amazing technical entry point. Again, I don't know anything about this company, uh, but I don't really see any technical entry like right now, other than if you see that dotted line, there is some support built up around that level. But uh, a bet down here around a dollar to a dollar 25, I think that's about as cheap as it's gonna get. All right, moving on to copper. Dr. Copper, uh, let's see, close the week at uh, 368. Um, it does have a bit of resistance above it right here. So we've got the 200 moving average just above it. Uh, then if we go out to the COPX, the way we're playing uh, this copper uh, uh, run here. Oh, let me bring it back to the daily. Um, yeah, but did a, another purchase in COPX uh, last week and uh, hoping to uh, kind of carve out a bottom here. A lot of resistance built up around that level, which is around 32, 33 bucks. Uh, hopefully it'll hold. Leveraging copper even more with Arizona Metals, uh, we made another purchase on Friday. Uh, we got a limit order in for $1.78 and it hit. And uh, so we'll see how Arizona Metals uh, works out. Uh, um, I think uh, I'm, I'm gonna pick uh, Michael Gentile's brain on that uh, shortly. All right, and what else we got? WRN. Okay, uh, SoCal Silver wants to know about uh, Western Copper and Gold and uh, Tasico Mines. All right, so I, I literally did the sound here, uh, SoCal. I went, ooh. All right, so let me get some of these out of the way just so you can see. So we got the horizontal line of support right there. I'm going to bring this out to the weekly. Okay, a lot of, uh, lot of support around where it is now, right? Okay, we did go through the 200 moving average, would have rather seen it bounce off of this, but we have the 400 below it. Um, it uh, it's kind of an interesting and compelling uh, entry point, I think. Um, another thing that would go right in line with that is if we draw a Fibonacci here from the low to the high, we can see that it's kind of on the lower end of that uh, buy zone, which would be around $1.27 or so, which is about where it's at now, $1.20. And we had a reversal bar to the upside on Friday. Kind of an interesting entry point. Uh, looking at the other one you submitted, I don't see quite as much, uh, although there could be an argument for it. It is uh, around in a Fibonacci, probably a little bit on the bottom side of it. Let me draw it in here just so you can see. I think, yeah, did not quite obey it there, but uh, yeah, maybe a limit order south of, uh, see, we had such a run up on Friday. Uh, maybe a limit order around here, like a 90 cents to a dollar or something like that might be interesting. All right, moving on to uranium. Uranium futures. Uh, close the week at 74. John Quake seemed to think about the same 74.50 in that ballpark. Uh, but look at this chart. I mean, just like we we could have a long way to go. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we shall see. But uh, here's the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. It is still trading at a discount. Uh, it closed the week at a 4.5% discount. So if you guys don't have any of this, just look at their website here and just see what the discount is. And that'll basically tell you if it's a good deal or not. Would like to see this correct down, maybe on the 50 moving average, although I don't think this one goes by technicals too much, as, uh, as <laughs> nearly as much as fundamentals. All right, URA. Uh, Dennis wants to know URA buy points. Um, and uh, so basically, if we look here now, URA is not the pure play one. They've got some other companies in there like, uh, what was it? I think Samsung, Mitsubishi, uh, you know, they're, they're making, you know, equipment to mine, but they're not actually looking for uranium themselves. Um, you know, I think that URNM is a much better pure play uranium, but a lot of guys have URA. So as far as buy points here, uh, Dennis, all I see is really like whenever this trend line is touched, like consider that like an entry point. We're kind of up in no man's land here. I would wait until it comes back down to this 50 moving average. And then if it goes lower than that, then have another one. So like try to time your limit orders here, like, I don't know, 26 bucks. And then another one down here on the 100 moving average, 25, and just kind of hit it on the way down. We believe that this sector is gonna do very, very well over the next year or two. And, uh, you know, spread out your bets. URNM, same kind of thing. Would love to see it come back down. Um, basically uh, up a little bit uh, for the week, but would like to see some more uh, points where we can buy into here. This this trend line right here isn't quite as nice as it is on URNM. Uroy, okay, we got um, 
uh, percussion octopus. He said, uh, do we have a uh, cup and handle pattern here in Uroy? So I'm going to go back for the life of this stock. And basically a cup and handle pattern is kind of like what we have on gold. Like if uh, uh, gold has a giant cup and handle pattern, and he was asking, you know, uh, is this a cup and handle pattern? And I was looking it up and uh, it's pretty interesting. Okay, so a cup and handle pattern is a really bullish uh, pattern. And generally speaking, when you get it, things go to the upside. Uh, the cup should be rounded. You don't want it to look like a V. That's not what we're looking for. Um, the pattern should have formed over about six or eight, six or eight weeks or so for it to form. Um, and then basically this handle, what you want to see is you want to see the handle kind of sloping down. And then your entry point is like, you know, over in this range somewhere. Um, whoops, I moved the Fibonacci there. There we go. Uh, and it, it kind of an interesting uh, point. Um, I mean, Maybe this is a cup and handle pattern. The one thing I don't particularly care for on this one specifically, although, you know, uh, I, I suppose they're never perfect, but see this purple line right here, the 200 moving average. Ideally, you would want that underneath this cup to just act as support. And then as it starts to come up, that catches the handle and it goes on. I mean, like if we were splitting hairs here, that's exactly what you want. And I would much rather see the 200 moving average underneath here to kind of to kind of hold it and hold the base of the cup. That's kind of the whole point of the thing. Um, but, uh, you know, basically what happens is this goes down, I don't know, 15 or 30 percent or so. I think it can goes down as much as 50 percent from the top to the bottom there. And if we draw in a Fibonacci like we had before, uh, we can see 50% uh, would be around there, like $2.40, something like that. I mean, we're just throwing this up real quick, but I'd like to see this come back down. And then I think those would be some interesting entry points. So, uh, Dennis, what I got for this one is a limit order in for $250, uh, which would put us right down at the bottom of, of that tick right there. Maybe I need to up it a little bit, actually. And then um, another one for the bottom part of this at uh, $240. So, um, anyhow, you, Roy, like it a lot. Uh, add to positions on weakness. Okay, going on. Someone wanted to know about, I uh, can't remember who, sorry, Global Atomic and GovX. Here's Global Atomic. We got in here with, uh, with the coup and then sold uh, uh, a little more than half our shares and paid taxes and all that. And now, now this is free. As far as an entry point, if you're looking at it now, I don't know. I'd like to see this kind of grind sideways for a little bit. Remember, according to Justin and Rick, our timetable on this one has moved out. Uh, significantly, like another year at least. Uh, so be patient with this. It's probably not going into production until like 2026. Same thing with GoVX. Didn't get into this one. I don't really see anything on the pattern here other than maybe like a limit order down there around 10 cents. Eight cents back here was the tick if you could catch it. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm not really seeing anything uh, technically on that. Okay, oil and gas, Devon Energy. That was a four by Rick Rule when the price was uh, back here. Uh, we got three different entries into this, got the cheap one down there. If you're looking for an entry now, I think kind of around uh, where this white line is right here, like $45.75, 46 bucks, something like that, um, I think uh, would be a nice one. Uh, good dividend stock, they pay, um, like them a lot. EQT is another one. We didn't get into this one. I think we're just gonna play Devon, but I know other people have. Uh, and we talked about two entry points. One was right here. The other one was right here. Uh, so hopefully uh, you got in on those and you'd be up quite a bit. Let's see what we'd be at now. 18%, um, not bad. Um, okay, that was equitable. Now we're moving on to oil. Got crude oil futures and uh, closed the week at $80.51, which is pretty, pretty exciting. Love seeing oil get cheaper. The way we're playing that is the XLE. Uh, so we made one more purchase uh, last week of XLE. And, uh, you know, we just looked for this double bottom here. And um, pretty much right around where this white line is, there's quite a bit of uh, resistance built up. And uh, we're able to snag it. I think we got it for like $84 or something. And um, hopefully it'll come down for a triple bottom and we could get it again. Also made some purchases into Exxon. We had limit orders at 107, 106, 105. They all hit. And, uh, um, you know, if you switch here between the charts of XLE and XOM, they're pretty darn similar. You know, XO, XLE is just the ETF that has a whole bunch of these. And XOM is, is Exxon itself, the best oil producer in the world. 
All right, and wrapping up, Robert wants to know about coal. He wants to look up Peabody Energy and um, kind of an interesting uh, entry point. I think um, it's, okay, take a look at this yellow line right here. That's the 50 moving average and then the 200 moving average right there. Do you guys remember what that's called? A golden cross, okay? So when the 50 moves above the 200, it's very bullish. Now we'll look back over history. The last time this has happened was way back here. That was in uh, a year and a half ago in February, 2022. We got a golden cross and look at this move that you got. Not saying that that's gonna happen now, but that's the last time it happened on this stock and uh, had quite the move. So that makes me think that this is a, a kind of an interesting time to buy. Uh, this company pays a dividend. Um, I don't know if you like coal, I, I kind of like this as a technical entry, maybe somewhere around there, maybe a, uh, um, a limit order around $23, $22.50, something like that. Another one around $21.50, down around there. Um, yeah, like it, Robert. Arch, okay, also a dividend one. Um, as far as on the charts, I don't really see a, a whole lot. There is kind of a wedge forming right here. You know, so uh, we're going to have some kind of resolution whoops, uh, to the upside or downside in that, but I don't see a whole lot to know which which way it's going to go. You know, I guess you could say, I think I'm just drawing lines at this point. We are on kind of an up channel trend line coming down. We'll find out how this resolves uh, by another 10 days or so, November 14th. But anyhow, I hope you guys got something out of that. Thank you guys for tuning in, support the show, hit the like, the subscribe, any of the links down below. Uh, some of them are affiliate links, some of them aren't. If you're going to buy those products anyways, like physical coins or, or join Justin's newsletter, uh, support the show and uh, use the links. You have yourself a great rest of the day. Happy trading, and we will talk to you next time.